This is the third video in a series on making a JSON service that can be consumed, in, in our case, by an Android program, but certainly by other programs as well, uh, not limited to the web, and uh, perhaps iOS and other programs as well. So what we've done in the first two videos is we designed our database in the first video, we created the database in PHP MyAdmin in the second video. And in this video, we're going to start off with a Perl script. So, I taught myself Perl when I was in college uh, back in the 96-97 school year, in my senior year. And it's something I'm very glad I did because, uh, what, well, it's something that uh, may be not as common or as object-oriented today as we see with Java. It's certainly something that's very useful and to use and very easy to put together something fairly quickly without investing a lot in an IDE a development environment. As a matter of fact, for this example, we're going to just use Notepad++ and I'm going to upload that to my CGI bin directory on UC file space. It's interesting if we look at some of these Perl scripts I wrote, they date back to March 2001 which is when I started at UC, which uh, making this video is about 14, 15 years away. So uh, in any case, a couple things we need. First of all, we need to make sure that our web host supports MySQL, which we've already done, and also supports Perl. After that, we need to contact our web host or search around and find out certain things like where Perl is located, because the first line of a Perl script is this thing we call the uh, shebang line, the hash bang line, line. Uh, and that says this is where to find Perl. After that, we're going to do some simple scripting to say, okay, I want to connect to the database, and this is the query that I'm going to run. So we need MySQL, we need Perl, and we need to make sure that the two can talk to each other. Now, because we're using Notepad++ to uh, write our Perl script, first of all, uh, let me turn on the Perl syntax highlighter on Notepad++, if you went a little quickly there, but language, P, and then Perl is what I chose there. Uh, so we'll turn that on. Secondly, uh, we're not going to get things like compile errors. So we want to go slowly here, and we want to test the script out by doing some very simple things. So first of all, I'm going to use this sample program that UC's provided me, and I'm just going to put up uh, boom. Okay, like that. Use DBI, use DBD, MySQL. Um, that's probably simple enough. I'm also going to say as the very first line, use CGI, which is a library that we can use to make things a bit easier. Now I'm going to say, uh, by the way, comment in Perl is a pound. I'm going to say print the HTTP header. Okay, and I'm going to say, uh, well, actually I missed one part. Okay, uh, initialize. CGI, okay, and so I'll say query, dollar sign query. In Perl, uh, most of our variables will start with a dollar sign. Dollar sign query, and then, uh, sorry, equals new CGI, uh, terminate with a semicolon. Print the header, we're gonna say print, which just means print something straight to output, print query header. Now I'll warn you that uh, Perl scripts are kind of like sourdough bread. We start with an existing Perl script and we'll typically just adapt it over time. We'll copy and adapt it. It's rare that you actually start one from scratch. Usually you'll take one that you've written and adapt it. As a matter of fact, plantplaces.com is written almost entirely in Perl. And I'm sure that some of that dates all the way back to the very first Perl script I wrote uh, back in 1997. Because I just took the same files copied and generated them. Had a lot of fun doing that. Okay, now we're going to say print, and when I say print, we're just sending output straight to HTTP. Print h1. Uh, this is a simple Perl script. Okay, and then close h1, and then terminate with the semicolon. Now, I'm, I'm very well aware this is not proper HTML. Uh, we should be doing quite a bit uh, to make proper HTML, but that's okay. We just want to make sure that our Perl script is going to work. So I'm going to say save as, and I'm going to save this under, um, yeah, we'll save it under UC. I'm going to save this as uh, view 
let's say, let's just say, yeah, sure, view plants json.pl and we'll choose save. Uh, now I'm going to go to WinSCP, which is something I can use to transfer files to my UC file space. Uh, refresh, hopefully we got there in the right place, UC, view plants json.pl. And I'm going to copy it up to my CGI bin directory. So the CGI bin directory is kind of like a blessed directory where we want, uh, where we're going to place Perl scripts that are going to run. So that's going to be specific to your host. Again, on an information page, kind of like the one we see here, it's usually going to tell you something like, here's the magic space, uh, where to put files that you want to run as Perl scripts. Okay, so back to my UC file space. I copy it up. And it copies. Now, one very important thing we're going to need to do, we're going to need to check the permissions. So I'm looking at uh, view plants JSON PL, and I need what's called a 755. Uh, in other words, I need the owner, the group, and the public to be able to execute this file. Currently, it's not set to 755. It's set to 644. And I can tell that just by looking at these rights here. So what I'm going to do is, well, assuming, see, now I'm wondering if I was looking at the right one because that scrolled away, didn't it? Okay, yeah, that's correct. So I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to say properties, let's see, custom commands, um, and actually it's properties that I want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say XXX here, which means that owner group and others can all execute this file. This is what we call permission 755, which is the permission that's required to execute a Perl script. So 755XXX, I choose OK. Let's look and verify that we have X's for owner group and public, and we do. So now what we want to do is we want to simply access this file and make sure that it is executing without error. We need to do this frequently because Perl is an interpreted language, not a compiled language. And that means that we're not going to compile, we're not going to get compile errors. So I go to my browser, and I'm simply going to put in my URL. And again, this path many times will be specific to your web host. For UC, it's homepages.uc.edu slash tilde your bearcat ID, then CGI bin, and then the name of the script. I hit enter. And we see confirmation. This is a simple Perl, simple Perl script. So this is enough to get us started on a Perl script. I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the video now, and I'm going to continue to edit this script. But uh, in the next video, I'm actually going to add a query. And I need to make the query. I need to do several other things. It's going to take uh, a little bit of time. So this is a good breaking point, And we'll pick up with the query in just a moment. Thank you.